Um, making again national he headlines, the president there talking about green energy, but then you see a Republican in the state as well uh, fundraising. Your thoughts, Tudor? Well, I'm thrilled to see a Republican there because we were able to take back a few blue seats in the state of California in 22, a few congressional seats. So it looks like California is, there are people out there that are supporting Republican and conservative policies. So I'm glad to see Governor DeSantis going out there and making sure we're taking back some ground there. But I think Gavin Newsom is very interesting because he says he's not campaigning. I think you used the operative word there yet. They're waiting to see what happens with Joe Biden. But what what else could happen? I mean, they may decide that they're going to push Joe Biden aside at the last minute, and then he will be the one going up against DeSantis and or or whoever is running at the time. And you know that Governor DeSantis has made it clear that he's saying, listen, if you're going to get in, get in. So he's preparing. I think that the other Republicans should also be preparing to go up against Gavin Newsom at some point. Okay, a really inter interesting perspective there. Of course, they're meeting with donors also in California, so that might also be a, a motivation as to why they're making the trip out west. But Tom, your thoughts on Gavin Newsom entering the, the race for president here? Again, it hasn't happened. This is all hypothetical at this point, but is there a lane in which you could see it playing out this way? Oh, for, for sure. I think that's why he's trying to make national news. And in fact, he is making national news. In fact, we're talking about him today because he's always on air. He's not dealing with the problems in California, but that's another issue. He's also taking on, obviously, Governor DeSantis. He's trying to get his name recognition out there. And to Tudor's point, we don't know what's going to happen with Joe Biden, but then Newsom would be next one up. Another scenario is if RFK Jr. starts really gaining in the polls, then it may open a lane for Newsom that it wouldn't be so horrible for uh, him to jump into the race. And then we also have to worry about that investigation uh, with respect to uh, President Biden, whether or not it's alleged that he took a bribe. So if all of a sudden, if the DOJ or FBI says, oh, yeah, maybe there's something to this, there goes uh, President Biden into uh, retirement. Well, so there's a lot of dynamics going on there. Well, there's not just that. Obviously, the DOJ is in in investigating the current president of the United States for his handling or mishandling of those classified documents. Mm -hmm. There has been no announcement from special counsel yet whether charges would be coming down or whether they're, they're not. They did so with the former Vice President Mike Pence, claiming that there will be no charges brought forward to uh, the former VP. But again, it's still waiting on any update on that investigation there uh, for the current president and his handling of classified documents. We'll go back to um, talking a little bit about campaign issues, if you will, bringing back up Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He was out campaigning in Nevada over the weekend. Uh, he went to a bar in Reno, got behind the counter, serving a few customers, and here's what he said he's not going to serve. This I do know. He will serve you anything but Bud Light, having a chummy moment there. But again, obviously a very serious moment for Anheuser-Busch and, and, and for those uh, that are no longer drinking Bud Light. Uh, referring to Bud Light there, using transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney in that promotional video that upset a lot of folks. Bud Light recently lost its long-held place as America's best-selling beer. Um, but again, going to that point, Tudor, it, 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 it is these uh, culture wars, if you will, that continue to play out right now, specifically on thoughts about biological men competing in women's sports on the high school and collegiate level, or what um, biological men or biological women uh, could do in terms of uh, gender, what they call gender affirming therapy under the age, uh, being a minor. Um, but this has become a hot uh, topic. Do you think this is going to be a topic on the campaign trail, Tudor? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you just saw Ron DeSantis talking about it there. It's going to be a topic and Republicans need to make sure that they're focused on what the country doesn't like about this. And it is targeting children. And that's why <laughs> Target, no, no pun intended, but people have decided to stop. Many people have decided to stop shopping at Target because they were targeting children, not only in their what they were putting out on the shelves, but also in their fundraising or their, in their giving. They were giving to an organization that is placing books that some have argued are pornographic into schools. The same with Bud Light. They hired an influencer who has been talking about girlhood rather than womanhood. So it's targeting children. We'll hear a lot of these politicians saying, we're not going to be targeting children, number one, and we're not going to 
to be targeting women's sports. Those are two winning issues. When you get into the out, the fringes, the outside of that, then it's a little bit more of a gray area. But when you're talking about strictly children and women's sports, that's where conservatives have the right message. Yeah, and clearly there's enough momentum behind it in that we've seen there really be an impact with these brands, at least in the case of Bud Light, now no longer the number one selling beer. All right, let, want to show you some polls. And again, take polls with a grain of salt. We know how uh, sometimes they aren't accurate. JL Partners, Daily Mail, behind this one. It shows you this, a hypothetical matchup, Biden versus DeSantis here. Joe Biden squeaking out the victory, 44% to 43%. Ron DeSantis will show you another one, hypothetical matchup here, Biden versus Trump. Uh, Biden, 46%, Donald Trump, 44%. So overall, still, again, according to the these polls. Uh, this was June 12th through the 15th here. Joe Biden takes home the win. But Tom, talk to me about the numbers you're seeing here on the screen. How much you're reading into these polls? Well, as you mentioned, I mean, this is uh, we're way out uh, from the uh, presidential election. So we know anything can happen. Maybe even Biden won't be there, as we mentioned in the previous section. We don't know. But those uh, cultural issues, I think, uh, are going to be huge. It gives the opportunity for Republicans, and whether it be President Trump, whether it be uh, Governor DeSantis, or whether the Republican be, to take that issue to get new voters. I mean, I, I would think the Muslim religion would be opposed to transgender. It would be a great opportunity, uh, especially with children, the surgeries, getting that group in, into the Republican field, as well as conservative blacks. Hit those black churches with the messages of the Republicans are the ones, the party that promotes faith. Uh, going back to the Dodgers as well, uh, go to the Catholic vote, uh, the, the cultural issues, I think, the cultural wars, as Sean mentioned, are going to be big, and it gives a huge opportunity for Republicans. But those poll numbers, um, anything can happen. Last time the polls were wrong, it's about getting out the vote. That's most important. We followed the polls uh, for a long time, watching the the race for Pennsylvania U.S. Senate, getting more specific here. Um, and they went back and forth with Dr. Oz, John Fetterman. Obviously, Fetterman pulled out the win. Uh, but going through time, you've seen that there are a number of medical conditions, unfortunately, that the senator has faced. Uh, again, a seizure. Um, and then his, uh, again, depression that he had to be, uh, that the he, stroke. the yeah. stroke, mm -hmm. thank you, and that had to go in for, uh, again, treated for depression as an inpatient uh, tutor. This has been a lot of, um, on the question, or a question for a lot of voters' minds, is he fit to, you know, run or to, to keep his position in office? You've seen him appear with the president in a hoodie, uh, wearing shorts, while others are there in, in suits, uh, struggling to speak this weekend. In Philadelphia alongside President Biden talking about that collapse on I-95. Uh, Tudor, if you could talk about that, it's a sensitive topic, but how do you discuss this because it is a serious issue, the concerns that voters do have? Yeah, I think you're in a situation where you have a man who is younger, who has suffered a, a catastrophic stroke and potentially has long-term effects on whether or not he has the cognitive awareness that other folks have. We're not sure exactly. We're not getting the medical reports. And that's where the American people are saying, well, there's obvious problems with communication. Is it two-way or is it one-way? But the concern here is that Democrats are unwilling to come out and say, you know what, we want to support this man. We want to make sure that he has the medical attention that he needs. And so we're going to say right now that this is not the best career for him. It's a high stress career. We're going to take care of him, but we're going to appoint somebody new because they can't do that right now. They have the same situation with the president of the United States. And if they're willing to come out for a young man who clearly needs some medical attention, then they have to also come out for a man who is much older and suffering with potentially dementia. And they're just unwilling to do that. So this puts John Fetterman in a very uncomfortable position as he struggles through his inability to communicate appropriately. You know, I mentioned this the last time we were discussing, again, that soundbite of John Fetterman addressing the crowd uh, near Interstate 95. The lack of media curiosity when it came to the, mm. trans, the uh, campaign trail, right? You know, you've got to be transparent with the voters and say, this is really who the candidate is. This is the struggles they might have. And just so you know, before you go to the ballot box and cast your ballot. And Tom, I'm wondering again, you know, John Fetterman, he's got his seat now, right? The Senate serves six-year terms. But for the current president of the United States, is there something the media can do uh, to follow up on maybe questions voters might have? about how the president is faring right now. I mean, we heard him over the weekend say, God save the queen, man, and no one seemed to know what he meant by that. 
Yeah, uh, Emma, that's a great point. God save the Queen. Uh, God save the United States from Biden and the Democrats. That's my view. No, it, it, is, it is a serious issue. And to your point, it is the failure of the media to do their due diligence, to do their basic job. Too much of the media is focused on essentially just spewing out propaganda for the Democrats. Any logical, I mean, there could have been so many Pulitzer Prizes for doing real investigative reports. Instead, they got Pulitzer Prizes for the Trump-Russia collusion, which we now was fake. So the whole media landscape, a lot of it, let me correct myself, a lot of it is really twisted. They're into the propaganda game. And essentially, they're ripping off the American people, because if you watch the wrong channels, you're not getting the right information, so you cannot make an informed decision with your vote. Well, we appreciate you both weighing in today with your thoughts and your political analysis. Tudor Dixon, Tom Borelli, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome.